Hi, welcome to the New Wave Cooking Club. I'm Jennifer, the executive chef for New Wave Oven. Today we're going to do a ham in a cola and a, at the last 15 minutes we're going to put a nice um, rub on it. I want to talk a little bit about ham. This is an already smoked and cured ham, which means all we're going to do is bring it up back up to temperature. And you really want ham to be about between 170 and 180 degrees before you serve it. I went ahead and bought a spiral ham. And I am going to go ahead and, if you do buy a spiral ham, get all the layers open because when I pour the cola in, I want it to all seep down. Now, if you buy a, a whole picnic ham, they're called, those usually are not cooked. Look on the little label and it will tell you. If it's smoked, it means it's cooked. If it has no smoke on the label, then you have to cook it longer. So you can always go up to your butcher and ask them if this is a smoked or if it's cured. Or smoke and cure is basically the same thing. If it's, if it's raw or not, then you have to really cook it for a long time. But today we're going to talk about cured ham. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add all the layers, take your cola, ah, roughly half of a can, and just kind of run it down. Now, if you do have, if you buy a ham that's not spiraled, I'm going to show you when I get done doing this, how to cut it. Going through the motions, but not actually messing up our spiral. Just a little bit. We're going to save about this much. Okay, now if you have, let's imagine these do not have the cuts. If you have a, a picnic ham that's not cut, you're going to make nice, even strokes, and you're going to cut into the fat, but not into the meat. So you're going to go like this, and then all you're going to do is bring your knife this way and cut squares into it, okay? And then you proceed like the rest of the recipe that I'm going to show you. Now, with New Wave, the beautiful thing is, is we're going to heat this for 15 minutes a pound. Every 15 minutes to a half hour, it depends on you, whatever you want to do. I am going to add a little bit more cola to it. Um, you don't have to do that, it, but that's just me. I'm, I'm going to do that. If you have a frozen ham, you want to let the frozen ham sit out for maybe 5-10 minutes so you can get the wrapping off, and that's going to be about 20 to 23 minutes a pound. It's an estimate. So here we go. I'm going to put this off the side because I'm going to make our, um, our bread topping that's going to go on it. All right, dome goes on. It's 15 minutes a pound. I do have the extender ring kit on here. If you do not have the extender ring kit, you must tent it probably 20 minutes after you start because you'll notice the ham already starting to brown because you're, you're closer to the power head. But if you are a New Wave user, I highly recommend the extender ring. It's awesome. So 15 minutes a pound, it's 10 pounds. We're going to roughly give it uh, two hours and 30 minutes, but I'm going to give it 15 minutes because then I'm going to be making this uh, topping for it and I'm going to go off and do some sweet potatoes. Then I'll come back and baste it. But however you want it, want to do it. So touch and go. Cook time, 15 minutes, start. Now, for this, it's real simple. Plain breadcrumbs. If you don't have plain breadcrumbs, take roughly four or five uh, slices of bread, just cut off the, the crust, throw them in your Cuisinart and pulse them and you'll have breadcrumbs. One cup of brown sugar. I like light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, you really are going to get too much of a browning on your ham. Then some dried mustard, some fresh cracked pepper. Never, never, ever add salt because ham is very salty, especially if it's already cured. If it comes from a raw state, then of course you do want to add some, uh, some salt. Okay. Now, it's going to not seem like enough liquid, but I want it real pasty. So we're just going to keep incorporating it until all the breadcrumbs are gone. Do you ever get that nice, you know, you go and have a piece of ham and you get that nice crunchy bite on the outer layer? That's what this is. And it's all ingredients that we probably have in our pantry. So easy. Now this is a good tip. 
I use the same recipe, but instead of using the brown sugar, I use horseradish and I put it on my roast. Little tip, and I, I might not use a whole cup of horseradish because that's pretty hot, maybe a half a cup. And then you just cut down on the liquid. All right, so we're gonna put this aside. I'm gonna go work on my sweet potatoes. And when we come back, we'll baste this. Okay, our first 15 minutes has gone by. So I'm going to baste it. And I like to take a brush at this point and just baste. A nice tip to know if you are using this for a lot of people or for the holidays, you can go ahead and do your ham in the morning and just wrap it really, really good in, in foil. So you can put this aside and then before you serve it, maybe just give it five minutes back in the new wave so that you can do your sweet potatoes or your rolls or whatever. All right. All right. So we're gonna put our dome on and we're gonna give it two hours and 15 minutes. But this power head only goes to two minutes. So if you put in 2.15, it's gonna default back to two, two hours. So keep that in mind. So two, uh, so the last 15 minutes, I need to put the breading on anyway, so this actually works out perfectly. So touch and go. Cook, two, zero, zero, start. And I'll see you back in a couple hours. Okay, our oven is done. As you can see, I tented it with parchment paper. Now we're gonna give it 15 more minutes and we're gonna leave the parchment paper off because we wanna form that nice crust. Okay. I did go ahead, just so you know, and I added a little bit of liquid back to this because it really got dried out sitting here for a couple hours. So I, I wanted to show you how to do it on camera, but I would suggest maybe doing this like five minutes before you get ready to put it on. And then, no rhyme or reason, just kind of pat it on. Oh, it smells so good. Just pile the rest on. Oh, you're gonna love that smell. Okay, let me explain. If you have the extender ring kit, you're gonna do it a full 15 minutes. If you do not have the extender ring kit, you're gonna do it six to seven minutes. Otherwise, you're gonna, it's gonna get burnt. So, because we have the extender ring, we're gonna give it 15 minutes. Cook time, 15. Touch and go, as easy as that. So we're gonna give it 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna show you a nice, easy way to cut ham. Be right back. Okay, our ham is done. Let's take off the extender ring in the dome. This is hot, but it's not hot enough that it's gonna burn and make a mark on you or a child. All right, I'm gonna turn this around because I wanna show you. Basically, you should always let all meats rest between five and 10 minutes, but for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Look at how nice and brown that is. Beautiful. And do you see all this juice on the bottom? That's all the cola. All right. If you want the nice slices out, the first couple pieces are probably gonna be a little bit of a... Okay, so right here, it's all still attached to the bone. So what you wanna do is you wanna make a deep cut into, as close as you can to the bone around it. Now I've hit bone, so I want to move over a little bit. Okay. Now, as I peel it back, it's going to come right off. Do you ever get a spiral ham and you have all this meat left at the bottom? 
is because you need to make those two, three cuts. Look at how pretty this is. So here you have your ham. Look how it's just, it's moist, it's perfect. Oops, it's kind of hard to cut in this dome. So there you have it. Now all this juice on the bottom, if you'd like to take it and put it, um, uh, just, you know, put a little bit on the top, that's fine, or just disregard it. So I hope you liked it and have a great day.